California import part in British Columbia. This is by far the cheapest place in Canada. Shipped to your door with free shipping for empty axle parts. And um, also a lot of Volkswagen air-cooled parts are a great place for that. Um, so I ordered the 22-inch kit. The axles look great, they're chromoly cages in this kit I believe. Um, you got all your retaining plates, boots, and even uh, straps to hold your boots in, and hardware to hold all your CVs down. They did pretty good on this kit. We're going to start getting a list together for this buggy here. I got, uh, like you just seen, we unbox the axles. But we've got a whole bunch of little odds and ends here that I don't want to forget about before we go on our first test drive and end up hurting ourselves or breaking something that we don't want to. So um, we are going to get a little list together here. Alright guys, that's a pretty big list, but we get all this done, we can guaranteed take this thing for a drive. So this is going to be number one here, everything on this list I'm going to start going at. And uh, there's really not much more money to be spent other than maybe the actually the brake rotor I should have covered because this was a mistake on our part through HAI and they have no problem helping me out they're a great place so they're gonna cut me a new rotor no cost so that that should be no worries and the coils I still gotta buy coils that's about it and that's referring to the shocks but uh, <coughs> Yeah, so we're going to go at this stuff and gives us something to work off of. I just got home from work here and I went over to HAI and I gave them the dimensions on our new um, brake rotor. So that's getting taken care of. And also a 1 8 spacer, spacer sorry, to go in here to offset our center our rotor a little better. And that'll be all taken care of. I ran the line, I got the pads today. So the all four brakes work now, which is pretty cool. Other than the handbrake, I accidentally ran the uh, the fittings backwards, and this one's actually leaking like a sieve. So good thing I checked that. I might end up ditching the handbrake. We'll see how this goes, but it's giving me a hard time. It's an eBay piece of shit. I would never suggest buying one of them. Um, when it's too good to be true, it's usually too good to be true. So... Yeah, I got the rear end all taken apart here. I got the hubs ready to be sent out to get the holes drilled in them, just like that. And guys, we're gonna get the rear end parts pulled so we can get them sent for heat treating, but uh, there's a couple little touches we've gotta make to them. We've gotta take these lips off right here because our the cup, our CVs don't fit inside that cup. And also, if you look, the bolt, actually sticks out farther than the CV cup so well before it's uh, re-hardened we've got to take the put them back on the lathe and end face into there a little deeper so that way the bolt sits farther in and then also end face off some of the center housing so that way the bolt can countersink in all the way right but uh, yeah, that should that should solve the problem because you can't have these bolts sticking out like that past the flange. They'll interfere with this CV joint. A little view at how, how this works now. So I unbolt the two hub flange flanges from each side. Now I'm left with this center housing here that spins on the bearings. So I'm going to have to end face some of that off and end face some of the inside of that down. So that way... I can countersink those bolts a little deeper in there and hide them. And then also, if you look, there's a bit of play. Oh, that's because these plates are loose. But uh, all there is holding this spline section to that center section is a, a push pin through it, a hardened pin. But I'm going to lay a TIG weld in there, in that joint, on each side before we send it out for heat treating as well. And that should help strengthen that up real well. I'll show you a closer look at that when I take it apart here. Take it out. And those are the pins that I'm talking about that are holding it right now together. And you see, pull those bolts out, which don't sink in there far enough. 
So like I said, I'll have to end face some of that, cut into there, and also weld around there. And then we this off and now uh, here you can s I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera but as you can see I just sliced into this on the lathe probably an hour ago and you see the shiny um, how all the splines are shiny in there that's a, the sign of it being case hardened and also when I came with the lathe bit it was real soft real soft and then as soon as I hit right there it started chattering really hard and you can tell that the material got hard there so that's a good sign that this is case hardened and I'm pretty safe on these splines. And then if you look, it's even more visible on this side. You can see the perfect line of where the case hardening starts. So we should be safe to go on both these parts. I'm not worried about the spline stripping at all now. And then I laid a TIG weld in there. So that's good and strong. So we're not going to send this out. We're going to bolt it in and send it. And this is going to be ready to go. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and this will be ready to be put in and this will definitely be the end of this rear end video now until I get the hooks back with their holes just like this drilled into it so that won't be uh, too much longer probably next week sometime it was a really long day I didn't record much but uh, we knocked a ton of things off our list here you seen this morning we got the heat treating done not the heat treating done but we discovered that we're not going to have to heat treat those so they're all reinstalled. We're waiting on the holes. They're sent out. The rotor design is sent out for the new one. I um, I adjusted the throw and the clutch pedal. So now we got a working clutch pedal. Um, I fixed the brake lines here on the handbrake. I had them backwards. So when I pulled the handle, um, the fluid was going the opposite way. So it was sending fluid to the to the front master cylinder instead of the the rear brake caliper so I got that all fixed I, uh, I put in our proper adapters here for our rad lines top and bottom and I pulled the T off and re-tig welded that so it won't come apart oh and uh, I changed the oil flushed the coolant changed the coolant and that's all done so now tomorrow I'm going to go get a new tank of gas and we'll finish all of the welds on here. And then we're just waiting on those rear hubs and we can get the rear end back together. And then last things last will be the coils, getting the coils done. And then I'm thinking for the windows and the rest of the body panels, we're probably going to bring them into the other shop. We'll get the buggy completely done and bring them to the other shop and do them on site be a lot easier to do than here in the backyard to have a shear right beside us and do them real quick so that'll be it for this video we uh, got lots done we should be running here very soon probably within the next two videos I'm gonna <laughs>